happy Friday! After two long weeks away, I am back drinking by myself. I have just been to New York, to Nashville, and to Birdstown, Tennessee. I brought a suitcase absolutely jam-packed full of books, and I have to admit I didn't do that well in reading them. A few weeks ago I went on a different holiday where I read seven books in seven days, and this time I read seven books in 14 days. But you know, it's still good! If you want to watch me read seven books in seven days, you can click right here to watch that, otherwise just sit right down and I'm going to take you on a journey across the United States of America. This wine has been sitting in my fridge since before I went. It doesn't taste too good. So I started with a flying visit, 48 hours in New York. On my first full day in New York, I got stuck on the L train for a full hour. And I learned that the stereotypes about the subway announcements being unintelligible are not exaggerated. Like, invest in a better speaker system, New York. I couldn't hear anything they were saying, so I was just stuck there for an hour with no idea what was happening. But it actually wasn't so bad because I had with me on the train The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniel, which is one of the best books I have read in a very long time. Firstly, super appropriate title. It was a boiling hot summer in New York and yeah, everything was melting. But this is not a fun summary read like the title might suggest. It is gritty and harrowing, so brace yourself before you read it. I gave this book a five star review, which is pretty rare for me. That's how much I loved it. It's so different from anything I've read recently. It's set in the 80s and the basic premise is this young boy shows up in this small town and claims that he is the devil. And over the course of this one hot summer where everyone's losing their minds, strange things start to happen and the people in the town begin to believe this boy. And it is very upsetting, but it has messages that are so important to us today. I wrote a full review over on my blog, so if you click the book cover it will take you to my review. But basically I'm just urging you to get a copy of this one and prepare yourself for something magical and it's real and it's just, just read it. This is my top pick of the summer, just read it. It doesn't get better on the second sip. Okay, so back to New York. After I came out of the L train, weirdly because it had been so boiling hot, it suddenly started pouring with rain. I got caught in a massive thunderstorm. So I took shelter in the Bustle offices, where I finally got to meet my lovely editor. I've been writing for Bustle for over a year now, the first time I've actually visited, and the best part was that my amazing editor let me take as many free books as I wanted. So I just filled a tote bag with books. It was amazing. But then I didn't end up reading any of them that night because I watched Keeping Up With The Kardashians instead. The next day I set off early to go and explore Central Park, bringing with me the Banging Book Club's pick, A Little Gay History. Click on the book cover to go to the Banging Book Club video. I thought this was a really fun little book. It's based on an exhibition at the British Museum, and I think, to be honest, it would have been more interesting to go and see the exhibition rather than read it. But to be fair to it, it is very upfront about what it's trying to do, and it does achieve that, which is to give very brief glimpses into the history of sexuality and to show that heteronormativity hasn't always been the standard throughout history and in different countries across the world. So it did that, but I did find that on almost every page I was thinking, okay, so tell me more about that, which ended up feeling a bit frustrating. So I think as an introduction to the topic, it's great and it really hooks your interest, but I was already interested, so I would have liked something a bit more in depth than this. But it did definitely entertain me as I travelled around New York, and I think the exhibition itself would be great because it is a bit different actually seeing these exhibits in front of you. So my next plane ride was to take me from New York to Nashville, and on that trip I read DC Trip by Sarah Benincasa. And I really needed this one to be good because my plane was three hours delayed and they didn't let us wait in the airport, they made us wait on the plane with no air conditioning, no Wi-Fi, no TVs, no food, it was so boring. So I needed this book to be good. and. I just didn't like it. It was so disappointing because I really wanted to love this book. I mean, first of all, look at that cover, it just looks so fun. And I loved the description of it. It made it sound like it's a high school book, but from an adult perspective, because it's supposedly from the point of view of a first year teacher chaperoning a school trip. And I have lots of friends who are new teachers, so I thought this would be a really fun angle to read. But it didn't seem to actually do that. It didn't feel like an adult perspective at all. It felt very much like a teenage book and not an advanced teenage book. It was very simplistic. It was supposed to be funny, but I just didn't find it that funny. The characters were all caricatures, which I think was deliberate, but I didn't really like the effect of that because it ended up feeling like it was making fun of these social justice minded teenagers who were really cool and it's great to see them represented in a book, but they were so flat and one dimensional and over exaggerated. So I ended up feeling like it was 
making fun of activism and progressive thinking and I don't think that's what it was trying to do but that's how it came across. So I'm sad because this looked like such a fun book but I just, I didn't like it, it made me annoyed. But the concept was so good so if anyone wants to write a book that really is an adult perspective on a high school trip, I would read that, I loved that idea. Taste better now. Okay, so finally I arrived in Nashville where I forgot to take any pictures. Nashville is awesome, I really want to go again. It's got such a fun vibe, everyone genuinely is wearing cowboy boots everywhere, it's brilliant. We were only there for less than 24 hours and then we were driving up to Birdstown. And once we got there, I started Josephine Boyce's Rebellion. And the first thing that I have to say about this book is that this cover is made of like angel skin or something. It feels amazing. It's so soft and strokey. I could just touch this book all day. So that's the most important thing. The second thing is that I have to admit I'm only halfway through it because I got a little sidetracked by other things like the Cursed Child release, so I need to go back and finish it before I can give a proper review. But so far I can tell you that it's a fun dystopian YA, very reminiscent of The Hunger Games, so if you liked that you're going to love this one. It's got a similar spunky heroine who is willing to risk everything for her family, who's ready to rebel against a regime she doesn't believe in, there's a little love triangle getting set up. Anyone who loves The Hunger Games is going to adore this one, but I'll have to read more before I can tell you about it properly. Okay, so a very interesting book I read, Take It As A Compliment, illustrated by Maria Stoyan. This one needs a trigger warning for rape. Now my mouth is just dry, so I have to drink this horrible wine. Maybe that's what's drying out my mouth. So I read this one because it was recommended by the Feminist Orchestra Book Club. So click on the book cover to go to Jean's video, who runs the Feminist Orchestra, where she talks about it. It's a really interesting concept. Real people told their stories to Maria Stoyan of them being sexually harassed in any way, and she illustrated them. And the illustrations are really beautifully done. They show just enough of the stories to illustrate the tense and uncomfortable feeling of the stories, but they don't go very graphic, so a lot of it is left to your imagination which serves to make it even more unsettling. Some of the stories literally left my heart banging. One of the best things for me is that right at the end it has a whole section on how to talk to survivors and how to help them and what not to say, so I thought that was really brilliant. Okay, and the big one. I don't have it here because I got the ebook instead of the hard copy so I could get it faster. Of course I'm talking about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This is going to be a totally spoiler-free review so don't worry about anything. Now, I got to read The Cursed Child at 6pm on the Saturday night, which technically is just because my Amazon is still in UK time, so I got to read it at exactly the same time as everyone else in England. But because I was in the States, where everyone was still waiting for midnight, it felt like I was super sneaky and powerful. So I read it all in one sitting, and then wrote up my thoughts about it in time for the midnight release on Bustle. So the reading experience was obviously incredibly exciting, but what did I think of the play itself? It was fun! I enjoyed it! But I think what I felt while reading it is that first and foremost it's supposed to be a play, it's supposed to be performed. Reading it as a script was never going to be the same. And there's the fact that it's not written by JK Rowling, so it's never going to have her magical wit, it's never going to sound the same. The experience of it was nothing like reading a Harry Potter book, of course, and if you're expecting it to be, you were going to be disappointed. But if you go into it like I did, as just a fun chance to get another glimpse into the world that we all loved for so long, and if you're prepared to use your imagination a lot to visualize it as it might look on stage, which apparently looks incredible, <laughs> I spilt my wine. Yeah, if you do all of that, then you will have a lot of fun with this play. I do, however, have one major complaint. Why couldn't they make Scorpius and Albus gay? I was shipping them so hard the whole way through. They are having a romance story and it's so wonderful. And it just felt kind of frustrating. It's like, come on, it's 2016. Are we still so scared of having gay main characters? And particularly as JK Rowling is very vocal in real life about gay rights and gay pride. Just like making Dumbledore gay after the books had finished was kind of a cop-out, this felt like a cop-out as well. Because there aren't any openly gay Harry Potter characters. Just give us one Hogwarts gay couple. Preferably Scorpius and Albus, but just one! Just give us one! I know that JK Rowling has now said that's the end, but I would be happy for her to reopen it, if only just to write one story about an openly gay Hogwarts couple who go to the Yule Ball together and everyone's fine with it, because she said that Hogwarts is accepting. I'd like to see some proof of that. I then started on my final book of the trip, which was Age of Consent by Marty Leinbach. 
This is another one that definitely needs a trigger warning for rape. This is kind of a Lolita story. It has the mother who develops a crush on a local radio DJ and he goes along with that relationship going around for dinner at their house because for him, he has his eye on her 13 year old daughter. And it flashes between the history of his sexual relationship with this girl who is definitely too young to consent. That can tell what the theme is about. And the future in which she has brought a court case against him. But the rather shocking twist is that her mother is now married to the DJ and is testifying against her daughter. It raised a lot of important issues about the age of consent and also about who we believe in rape cases. And on top of that, it was also just a really fascinating exploration of this mother and daughter and the things that led the mother to end up testifying against her daughter and why she did it. And what was surprising to me is that I didn't end up hating the mother. I ended up feeling very sorry for her. So there's a lot being explored here. Really, really interesting book. So, those were all of the books I read while I was on my holiday, whenever I could find the time to read in between all of our other adventures. And now I'm back, I have a lot of reading to dive into. So I'm seeing there is going to be a lot of drinking by my shelf in my future. So don't forget to subscribe so you can see all of that and make new videos every Monday and Friday. In between that, you can follow me on Snapchat. My username is boobsmcboobs, because why not? And I will see you next time. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts on the ending of this book using only emojis.